Already the packaging concerns me. It's a bunch of rabbits playing pool in what looks like a seedy pub and they're also smoking and drinking. <laughs> In my last video, I talked about why I still feed pellets to my rabbits and in today's video I'm gonna be talking about the brands of pellets that I feed to my rabbits. So I've got a whole bunch of them here. It's not not just Oxbow. So today I am going to be talking about the brands and varieties that I have fed my rabbits, what I think about them and some of the other brands that I would personally stay away from. I have a rule when it comes to pellets, which is that if you can't get them a premium quality pellet, then you are better off not feeding them pellets at all. I've spent a lot of time researching pellet ingredients and the recommended nutritional values. It can get very complicated, but I'm going to try to keep it as simple and high level as possible for the purposes of this video. So with pellets, basically you've got grass based pellets and grain based pellets. Grain based pellets are pretty much trash and just don't even bother with those. You want to give your rabbits a grass-based pellet. Then with grass-based pellets, there are usually Timothy-based ones and then Lucerne-based pellets or alfalfa if you're from the US. Lucerne-based pellets tend to contain more calcium and protein, so they are usually recommended for young rabbits that are still growing or lactating rabbits that are producing milk to feed their young. So that is the role that Lucerne pellets play. For a regular adult rabbit, it's usually recommended to give them a Timothy-based pellet that is very high in fiber and lower in everything else. So when you look at a bag of pellets, there are two main areas that you really want to focus on, which is the ingredients list and the nutritional analysis. The nutritional analysis will usually tell you the levels of protein, fat, fiber, moisture, calcium, phosphorus, and different levels of different vitamins. To be honest, I really only focus on fiber, which is the most important one protein, fat, and calcium. And when it comes to those recommendations on what is the appropriate amount for your rabbit, it varies from source to source. So what I've done is I've just taken like three or four different sources and just kind of made an average of each of those levels. I'm using that as the standard to benchmark all of these products against. So let's start off with the one that everyone probably knows about, which is the Oxbow Essentials Adult Rabbit Food. These are the pellets that my rabbits get every day. These are considered a premium quality pellet and a pretty safe choice for your rabbit. So when we look at the guaranteed analysis, you can see that the fiber, protein, fat, and calcium all fall within range of the recommended guidelines. When we look at the ingredients list, we can see that it's Timothy grass based, which is great. Cane molasses, wheat middlings, sodium betonite, a whole bunch of other stuff. So ingredients list can be really tricky to understand because I think the average human does not know what most of these things are. I actually contacted Oxbow and Burgess to explain to me what these were and why they were in the pellets. So I will put a screenshot of that conversation here if you want to pause the video and have a read of it yourself. Cane molasses is a hotly debated ingredient in rabbit pellets. It's a thick, dark, sticky liquid that comes from sugar cane and it's used to bind the pellets together. So Oxbow actually has a blog post on their website explaining why they have cane molasses in their pellets and the nutritional benefits of it. I'm not here to say whether it should be in there or not. I don't know, but I will link that resource if you want to read more about it yourself. But overall, I am happy with these pellets. My rabbits really love them. I also love that they're a small size because it means when I'm using them for treat training or whatever it is, I have more pellets to offer them. The next one is the Oxbow Organic Bounty Adult Rabbit Food. This is one of their newer product ranges and the main difference between this one and the regular Essentials one is this one is full of organic ingredients and it claims to mimic the natural environment more so than the Essentials one. So when we look at the ingredients we can see things like organic grass hay, organic canola meal, organic wheat straw, 
And in terms of the nutrition, again, it all falls within the recommended guidelines. So I would also say this is a pretty healthy pellet. Another thing I wanna say is I often see people say things like, oh, I can't feed my rabbits Oxbow because they hate it. They much prefer this and they'll name some cheaper grain filled pellet. Rabbits naturally wanna eat things that are tasty, even if it's not good for them. So it's like giving a kid chips versus a bowl of plain wheat bix I don't know, something healthy, right? Of course, they're gonna pick the thing that tastes better and that is why some rabbits may reject higher quality, healthier foods at first because to them, it's not as yummy. And that is why it is important to try to wean them off the junk food and get them onto something healthier. Next one is Burgess XL. These are the nuggets with oregano. Probably the most popular Burgess pellets are the ones with mint, but I chose the oregano ones because they marketed it as being better for their digestion. So I thought the rabbits might prefer this. They smell really good. They actually smell like oregano and remind me of a herb bread of some sort. I was kind of surprised when I saw the ingredients for this because I've always viewed Burgess as a very premium brand. And I do still think that it is a good product, but I just want to point out a few things. So when we look at the nutrition, the fiber is not as high as I expected it to be. It is at 19%, which is still okay, but nowhere as high as like the Oxbow pellets. The protein, fat and calcium levels are all fine. And when we look at the ingredients list, the first ingredient is grass meal, though it doesn't say what type of grass I'm assuming meadow grass because this is from england right uh the rest of the ingredients also don't look as good as say the oxbow organic bounty so i don't think these pellets are as healthy i'm gonna keep feeding this one to my rabbits but more as an occasional treat or sometimes i mix in a little bit of this with their oxbow ones to just keep it interesting but i don't think i would use this as their main daily pellet now we've got selective naturals grain free you may recognize the packaging of this looks very similar to Science Selective. I believe they are the same brand, but this is the grain-free version. And it says it's made with Timothy hay, no corn, no wheat, rich in natural ingredients. And that is basically what sold me. The fiber, protein, fat, calcium is all within the healthy range. The ingredients, so Timothy hay is the first ingredient, which is great. Soya bean hulls, which is fine. Pea flour, flaked peas, ground soya bean meal, ground dry locust beans. I don't know about beans. The ingredients list looks okay for this one. The thing that I don't really like about this pellet, and it's not the worst thing, is just how big they are. Like, let me show you compared to the Oxbow ones, right? Oh dropped one on the floor. Can you see the difference in size there? These ones are just so huge and I've never seen a rabbit pellet that big. Next we have Veda Farm Origins. Uh, this obviously isn't the packaging. My rabbits tore the bag open so now they're in this container. Veda Farm is considered mid-range here in Australia. They don't have the best ingredients list but they certainly don't have the worst. So I used to feed this to Turbo when he was really young and he loved them. Nutritionally, you can see the fiber is kind of low at 16%. The protein, fat and calcium are all okay. When we look at the ingredients, the first ingredient is fescue hay, which is fine. They have lucerne as the next ingredient. And then they also contain whole grains, wheat, soybean and oats. So that would explain why my rabbits go so crazy for these. I was considering keeping these in their rotation as an occasional treat, sometimes sprinkling it in with other pellets. But as soon as I started doing that, bun me's poops went all whack again. So I don't think I'm gonna feed these to my rabbits anymore. The last one that I physically have here with me is this little bag of Baristock pellets that I got when I picked up bun me from her foster carer. Bun me was underweight when they got her, so they were told to give her some Baristock pellets to help fatten her up, which I think worked because when she came to us, she had a cute little dewlap. The thing with Baristock pellets is that I am pretty sure these are formulated 
for farming meat rabbits. So it's made to help rabbits put on weight fast, which is why Bunmi was taking them to help her bulk up a little bit. So you can even tell by the packaging, they've got all like this group of white rabbits and these are the types of rabbits that are usually bred in rabbit farms. And it also comes in a massive 20 kilo bag, which is ideal for someone breeding lots of rabbits because they need lots of food. So it makes sense for them to buy it in bulk. When you compare that to a premium pellet, which usually only comes in a two or max four kilo bag, these are formulated for people's pet rabbits. So people who only have one or two rabbits and pellets only make up a very small part of their diet. But that aside, let's look at the nutrition. So the fiber is surprisingly decent in this. I was not expecting it to be this high, 21%. The ingredients, however, this is a pure grain based pellet. There is no grass in this. It's just cereal grains and byproducts legumes and their byproducts, vegetable protein meals, vegetable oils, vitamins and mineral premix. So it's a very vague ingredient list and I would not feed this to my rabbits anymore. Those are all the brands that I have tried out with my rabbits with the exception of the very first thing I bought for Turbo when I got him and had no idea. I bought him a Peter's pellet and grain mix and then as soon as I got home, I think I Googled rabbit food and I found out grain mixes were horrible. So I painstakingly sat at my dining table for a few hours picking out all the pellets so I could at least give him those and I threw out all of the seeds and fruit and other stuff that was in there. So I wanna talk about a brand called Peters. Now Peters, I think is an Australian brand of small animal foods. They do hay, pellets, treats, whole bunch of stuff. Apart from their hay, I would say most of their product line is kind of, I would not feed it to my rabbits. So to demonstrate how problematic some of the Peter's products can be, this is the Nibble and Gnaw Banquet product. And the fiber is atrociously low at 10%. The protein is 14 and a half, which is okay. It's very high in fat, 6%, and very low in calcium, which I don't, know if that's actually a bad thing or not but it's outside of the recommended range when we look at the ingredients i just see a whole bunch of grains and some lucerne which is that the only grass that's in this if we look at the lucerne pellets again it's quite low in the fiber high in protein it's in the safe range for fat and it is just outside the safe range or the recommended range for calcium sorry my rabbits have discovered that I've got all the pellets out and they are gonna start tearing bags open. Hey, hey, calm down, calm down, calm down. Sorry, Bunmi gets a little crazy for pellets and she can be a bit of a, ow, bully to turbo. She bit my hand. She's too excited, here you go. Peters makes a lot of questionable products, but they do have this new pellet which actually looks pretty good. It's called the Fiberite Timothy based adult rabbit food and these ones as you can see the fiber protein fat calcium is all within the recommended range the ingredients list also looks pretty good it's similar to that of the premium brands so it is timothy hay based there's some pea fiber sunflower seed meal maize starch i don't know about that one but these ones actually look pretty good the only thing is they actually cost more than the Oxbow pellets per weight. So I feel like why would you not just get the Oxbow ones? I feel bad. I don't want to completely dump on this brand. I think their haze can be okay, but I just would not get any of their formulated foods because I don't think that they are very good. Another brand that I see recommended that concerns me is Jack Rabbit. So Jack Rabbit has, I think, two main product lines. Um, I'm gonna look at the premium rabbit pellets because that should be their best product. Already the packaging concerns me. It's a bunch of rabbits playing pool in what looks like a seedy pub and they're also smoking and drinking. <laughs> That's not right. Anyway, nutrition wise, I have seen different values being reported here so the fiber the best number i could find was 20 percent but i've also heard that it's actually only 16 percent the protein is very high at 18 percent the fat is okay and 
I could not find a value on calcium. So they don't even have a complete nutritional analysis to provide. When you look at the ingredients, the first two haze are both legume haze, clover and lucerne. So those are usually very high in calcium and protein, so not ideal for adult rabbits. And then you've got a whole bunch of grains. Another huge red flag with this product is they actually say Old Jack's premium rabbit pellets are a complete food. No other supplementary feeding is required, which is just complete nonsense. There is no way you would feed just this to your rabbit. I just remembered another one I wanted to talk about, which is the supermarket brand. So Coles and Woolies have recently put out their own brands of rabbit pellets. And I'm just gonna save you some time now and just don't bother with them. Cause I already took a quick glance before and it was pretty bad. So which one is my top pick out of all of these brands that I've spoken about? I am going to have to give it to the Oxbow Organic Bounty pellets. I think out of all the ones I've got, this one has the nicest ingredients list and it's also very popular with my bunnies. Look, even the one on the packet looks just like bunny. Look, is that you? He looks just like you. If you're looking for the best quality pellet at the best price, then I would say the Oxbow Essentials is the best one to go with. If you're used to feeding your rabbits, whoa! If you're used to feeding your rabbits something like Veda Farm or Peter's, of course this is going to seem expensive in comparison but just remember that you don't actually need to feed them that much and a small bag like this can still last them like six months to a year so i hope you guys have found that video helpful and if you want to know any more about pellets then i recommend you check out my last video where i talked about why i still feed pellets to my rabbits and the whole pellets versus pellet free diet thing i'll let you guys go now thanks for watching and i'll speak to you next time bye